The first practice drill we're going to talk about is something that we do every day as a defense. All right. We call it the tackle takeaway circuit. All right. And really like the tackle takeaway circuit because of really these four things. Number one, the power of focus. It gives us an opportunity to focus on individual skill sets. All right. For two to three minutes at a time. So, you know, we'll usually have three different drills going. So one drill might be working on block destruction. The other drill might be working on tracking a hip for tackling. The other drill might be working on ripping a ball out or punching a ball out, creating a takeaway. And so each of these individual drills, you're allowed to focus on just that fundamental for those two to three minutes. Okay. Number two, it's very efficient. We can get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. All right. Number three, there's some things that are fundamental to all positions. All right. So it doesn't matter what scheme we're doing. We're all going to track hips. We're all going to shock and shed. We're all going to recover balls in a crowd a certain way. We're going to scoop balls a certain way. So there's a lot of things that are universal. Okay. And then number four, which is really one of the most important things is every coach coaches every player. So if I'm the defensive line coach, all right, for three minutes, I get to coach the DBs. All right. They get to hear my voice. And so over time that adds up. Okay. And so uh, we really like it for, for, for that reason. It allows each position coach to get maybe closer with some guys that they don't uh, coach every day. And uh, it's been really good for us for a long time. And so when we talk about that, we talk about the different phases of our tackle takeaway. All right. So, you know, we got takeaways, ball disruption, tracking hips, the finish part of the tackle, the clamp, the finish, the drive for five, those things that we're going to talk about, and defeating blocks. So those are the different phases that we use. When we're talking about takeaways, all right, the first drill we're going to talk about is what we call ball in a crowd. All right, this is when the ball's on the ground, there's too many people around, and I can't scoop it. I just need to fall on it and get possession of the ball. So when we do that, we want a baseball slide into the football, curl around it in a fetal position. We're going to bring our knees to our chest, all right, and we want to we want to squeeze our elbows and tuck our chin, all right? If you don't have the ball, you want to try to cover your teammate because you guys know how it is in the bottom of a pile. It's not very pleasant. OK, and so when we get to the video, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Here we have the guy in the middle is the recovery guy. All right. And then the other two guys are one's going to try to cover him and one's going to try to get it away from him if they don't do a good job of recovering. It. All right. What you don't want to do is you don't want to dive directly on top of the football because number one, it's going to knock the wind out of you. Number two, the ball can squirt out. So by by getting on your side and recovering the ball, it gives the it gives the ball a place to go. Okay, so here's a game example. You know, I we don't like to talk about it. We like to show it. All right, so here we go. Got a ball on the ground. Bam. Right now, the most important thing is just recovering that football. Possession is the most important thing. Okay, ball's on the ground here. There it is. We got to get that football. Again, ball's on the ground, and we got to get it. Okay, next. Now, if the ball's on the ground and there's nobody near me, all right, now I want to scoop it and score. All right, when we scoop and score, we're going to we're gonna bend our knees. We're going to get our near foot out of the way. We're going to scoop it with our hands touching the ground. All right, and if the ball is on its way out of bounds, we're going to bat it back in, all right, so we have a chance to recover it. If it goes out of bounds, then – that's not good for us. So sometimes we'll do this drill on a sideline and guys have to work on batting the football. If they miss the first scoop, we just have them fall on it. 
So you can see this player, he drops his near foot out of the way. He bends his knees, and then we scoop and score. One thing that we do is, like when we're in team or seven-on-seven seven or whatever that is, any balls that are on the ground, we will automatically scoop those up. When you do the drill, they know it's coming. When it happens in a team session or seven-on-seven seven session, they don't know it's coming, so they just have to react, and we're training the reaction. All right, so this is scoop and score. So here we go. This is a seven-on-seven. Seven. All right, and we're going to scoop all loose football. So this ball's on the ground. So right now, we're going to scoop that ball. We're going to practice doing that every single time so that when it happens in the game, we're not surprised. All right, you can drill it all you want, but you need to also work on it in practice so that when it does happen, you know what to do. Wasn't the cleanest, but he got it up. Okay, the next drill we talk about is big hit or pick. All right, big hit or pick is a vision and break drill. All right, you're going to key step clue the drop. You're going to have zoom eyes, meaning my eyes go from zone to man. All right, we're going to burst, settle, and drive. So you see this player, he's going to get to his drop. He's going to settle his feet. Then he's going to burst out. You see these two pop-ups here about 10 yards apart. All right, then there's a guy standing behind each pop-up so that if the ball goes past, they can shag the ball, okay? And so the point is, if you can intercept the football, intercept it. If you can't intercept the football, knock it out of the receiver here. All right, so that's why we call it big hit or pick. So we're either big hitting the receiver or we're going to pick off the football. One thing you can do nowadays, targeting is a big deal. So we have put tape on these pop-ups so they have a target zone. So they want to target at or underneath this tape to keep us from getting above the shoulder targeting penalties. Bam, right there. Knock it out. Those hits add up. Those hits definitely add up. All right, balls in the air, vision and break. Pick it. I think it's important for your players to see your drills showing up in a game. All right, the next thing we talk about is green balls. So green balls is something, and all we're really working on is ripping or punching the ball. And we call it green balls because we have these nifty little green balls on a string um, that we have. And so um, sometimes we use those, sometimes we use regular footballs. Um, but we just call them green balls because we have those balls that we use sometimes. This is a two-on-one tackle drill. First man secure the tackle, second man strip kind of a drill. We call it second man strip. Obviously, we want the first guy to secure and the second guy to get the football out. it out. I'm going to watch this from the wide here. Watch, uh, watching this player right here. He's going to attack the quarterback. Quarterback's got a low ball. He's going to punch that thing out. Scoop it up. We got the ball on the 28-yard line. We're in business. 
You have to make players pay for bad ball security. So right now this quarterback has this ball, low ball. He's not protecting the football. All right, and we have to make him pay for that. Bam, so we get the ball out, scoop and score. So the last play you saw us ball in the crowd, this play you saw the scoop and score, gets his near foot out of the way, he bends at the knees, scoop and score. It all adds up. They say we're talking about ball disruption drills. Move forward here. Get through this clips. All right, so hands up. So we have to affect the quarterback. We have to disrupt the football. All right, and so when we talk about hands up, what we're trying to do is we're trying to affect the quarterback's vision. If the quarterback's face is at me and his hands off the ball, then I got to get my hands up and disrupt the football. All right, there you can see the little green ball that we have. Then you don't have to go chasing footballs all over the place. So this is what we call hands up. If the quarterback isn't facing you, you don't need to slow down. Just run to the upfield shoulder and keep going. And there we go. Hands up. Knock it down. Affect the quarterback. Balls in the air. Bam. Hands up. Very, very important that we disrupt the football. All right, we're blitzing here. 32 here is blitzing. If you can't get home, you can still add value. Bam, it's a great job getting the ball now. So hands up is something I think that we do a really good job coaching hands up. 